Hey folks, JD here, and today we've got my wife, Hannah, opening up the DIY wooden drone. Yeah, so I couldn't help myself when I saw this. I had to buy it. I thought it was... I've always wanted to fly a wooden quadcopter. I've tried making one a few times and it hasn't worked very well. So I thought this was going to be really, very good. When you open the package, this is what greets you. A set of instructions at the top in English and a set of instructions at the top in Chinese. Inside are a multitude of boxes. The first one we're going to look at is the flight control module. So let's put that to one side. Second one is AB motor modules. So let's put that to one side as well. The third box is the remote control battery. Let's pop that to one side. Then we have the LED orientation light. So we'll need that a little bit later. The top box transmitter module so again we're going to need that later on then we have the two boxes either side the one on oh they're both empty perfect and then underneath that we have our sprigs full of our quadcopter and transmitter parts so the best thing to do here is just to pull all the parts off first of all as the instructions say we're going to start off with the main quadcopter body then we're going to add the ab motor modules to them now these are a snap in effect as you pop them in you have to twist them and then that twist in action then allows the, uh, the 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 motor module to snap into place this is a total not no glue pack um so you you can just snap everything in and push everything in together and it'll just work without there being any issues so first of all we're going to open out one of the motors now inside each of these packs it's, you're going to have two motors and two sets of propellers. Those propellers correspond to the set of motors that you have in your hand. So if we start off again, just going by the instructions, we'll start off with the bottom plate. And then this is how you can see on the motor, right on the underneath, you have almost like a, a little black um, fitting at the bottom. Now that fitting, when, pushes, when pushed in, once you twist, that's what locks it into place. You'll see Hannah do that in a second. As it goes in, then she twists it. Oh, eventually. And it's the twist that allows it then to lock into place. And there's the twist. So we've done that now to all four. It's the same scenario for all of them. And then just make sure they're all on nice. And that's the base plate of the quadcopter. Now we come and we have to take out the three middle bits. So we just push those out. Once pushed out, these go in the middle. So these are your central supports for the top of the quadcopter, which allows the top to fit on quite snugly. So as I said before, no glue needed. All you have to do is just push them into place. They go in without there being any issues. Some care has to be taken when you push in these little wooden bits. The wood itself is quite thin uh, and I go into a lot of what Hannah found and what her thoughts are in the flight test video tomorrow. But essentially, not to give anything away, the wood is quite thin. So as you do push it in, just take a little bit of care to ensure that you're, you're pushing in a straight line and you're not putting any pressure on any place that it doesn't need to have it. Now we've got the top part of the quadcopter. This should then just fit over the top and fit into those three little modules that you've just installed. A gentle push just sees everything home and makes sure that everything is nice and sound. There we go. So then on the back of this you've got another slit that is for the battery to lock into place but we'll come to that a little bit later so there we go that's in check the other sides they should all be in as well there's a little bit of pressure needed here so just ensure that there's not too much pressure that's going to snap the uh, the wood bit of a fiddly exercise but very soon that will be complete
Next point is to then take across all of the supports from the top and then push those out so that we then have all of those parts ready to then be assembled into the quadcopter. Fortunately, all of these parts, they come off very, very easily. There's not any point where we had to sand them down. They come off very smoothly. The laser edge uh, of, the, of, of, the, of the wooden cut is very, very, very precise. So you're not gonna find that there's, or at least there certainly wasn't any with my kit. Uh, there was no sort of areas where I had to then file back down or sand back down. They came off very, very easily, very, very nicely. And now on to the last piece. And now, just to assemble it, these build up the structure for the, the landing sprigs and also for the propeller guards. So they just fit into place quite nicely, just slot in. No glue needed again, just a little bit of, of pressure. Not a lot of pressure because here is where we found that two of our, our supports did actually uh, bend a little bit. And one of the supports of the quadcopter arm did snap. So then we had to fix that with some araldite. So as you can see, the one arm gets put on, even though this footage is sped up, the one arm gets put on very, very easily. And then likewise, the other two arms are going to get put on easily as well, until eventually then we have all four arms on, which gives us the four landing sprigs, and then which also gives us the four propeller guards as well and then from there we can start to build up the quadcopter even more but I, I, as you can see it's coming together it's starting to make the, the 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 synonymous quadcopter shape so it won't be far too long now until we can continue there we are that's where the weak spot was Right, so there we have it. That is, it's taking shape. It's looking a lot like a quadcopter now. I'm loving this design as well. The laser etch, even though these a lot of these designs here is obviously for airflow and to re reduce weight. I'm just loving where they, where they have decided to cut. It looks very stylish. Now we need the bottom two brackets. These actually, no, sorry, there are four of them. These make up the, uh, the, the propeller guard tops. So just a couple of, uh, these are quite tricky to take out because of the curve. Once you have taken out all four, then you can just assemble quite easily, just again by pushing in, but be warned, take a little bit of care. Our area here did not snap, but Hannah did think that it was quite a, quite a, uh, quite a difficult thing to do, quite literally because you're pushing a thin piece of wood onto a thin piece of wood. That's it complete. Now let's start off with the electronics. So we've got our flight controller in there. So you've got two, one which is blue and does not contain a printed circuit board and one which is black and does contain a printed circuit board. Now I, I opted for the blue color, but we ended up going for the black color quite simply because the black color, as you can see, there's no printed circuit board on the underside of that at all. On the black one there is, and it didn't look like an easy task to change them over. So rather than snap the printed circuit board, what we then decided to do is change from the blue color. We went straight back and went straight to the black, um, which was a bit of a shame. But at the same time, it was the, the easiest option. I did not want to snap that printed circuit board. So as you can see, the blue does stand out very nicely. So then all we need is you need these are the parts here and these parts then just help to affix that body together. give you the extra supports that you need. There's only one way they fit on, so be very careful with those. They're, this area isn't too bad, as there is quite a, as, as this area of, of wood is quite thick, so it, it doesn't, doesn't snap or doesn't break easily, but still, be very careful. Just double check and make sure that's the right size. Next one now, let's open up this package, and inside there gives us our LED orientation light. There is a camera model for this as well, uh, but this whole package did cost me 
£23 for the orientation light. If you wanted the camera version, it jumps up to 50 55 I didn't think it was worth that, which is why I settled for the LED orientation, because I was more interested in its, in its flying rather than actually seeing how good the camera is going to be, because in, in fairness, the camera is probably not going to be very good at all. The camera module just clicks onto the front without there being a, any hassle at all. All this just clicks together and makes actually a very sturdy cord. Then you've got your four propellers, marked A for A motor, B for B motor, and then all you've got to do then is just make sure you line them up correctly. There is a uh, marking as well on the A and B side of the of the quadcopter on the wood, so you can see which motor assembles to which part, and then just make sure you put the propellers on the right place, and then that's it then. That will all work quite nicely. And then as for the, uh, as for the, the wires coming off, the motors all you have to do then is just connect it directly to the printed circuit board and then you should be away to go there's the battery there we go so the batteries themselves will charge inside here you've got the battery for the transmitter and you've got the battery for the quadcopter you've got the one charger to charge them both it's a circular charger so you shouldn't have any problem there in charging them in my experience the battery for the quadcopter which is the one you're looking at now that took best part of an hour and 50 minutes to charge and the battery there for the transmitter which is the smaller version that there took about 50 minutes to an hour to charge Now this is where we decided, there we are, there's the printed circuit board I spoke about earlier. So this is where we then decided to change the, the blue covering for the black covering and then went all out and just changed it up because there's no point, we need the printed circuit board in order for the thing to fly. So uh, there we are. It doesn't look like an easy affair to remove it so we just thought we would go with that. And the black and the blue looks a little bit striking, looks a little bit different so why not? Let's just go with it and have a bit of fun. So there is only one way this fits on. So you should find there that the, uh, the, the quadcopter arm, the quadcopter body just snaps into place. It can be a bit of a fiddle to do this, quite simply because the, there are so many um, so many parts cut out of the, the, the part of the quadcopter you're trying to fit it onto that you will probably find that yes, it goes in one way, but then the wires won't fit correctly to the printed circuit board, or like now, the, the support arms aren't in the right way, so then you've got to swap them around, uh, or because the battery connector isn't connect isn't connected in the right place so there's a lot of different things to take into factor here the, the instructions weren't very clear at this point so we pretty much just had to had to just go with it and see exactly how it how it all connected so here's hannah removing the battery and then reconnecting the printer circuit board and then which is probably the best way to do it in fair for you, in fairness if you do that first and then attach the mounts either side then you should find you get quite a snug fit uh, and it should go in quite easily as well well he says but um, we did find that this was most certainly the longest process out of all of it quite simply because the printed circuit board it doesn't give you a lot of a lot of movement it is those cuts are very exact so as soon as all these clips are in there is no movement with the head and with the top of the quad as you can see it it, it is held in very very securely and then the camera module then just clips into the front as we had it before when we had the blue body on and then once that is clipped in there we are it's a very definite click there we are that's not coming out of there there's no cable to connect with that. It is just a solid port and a port and socket affair. So once you clip it in, it is connected. And then the battery then goes in one way. You can tell the way that it goes in because the back end of the battery just clips into that, that little slit in the back of the of the uh, of the of the wood. That then ensures the battery doesn't fall out when you're flying. So there's a lot of thought that's been put into this. It is really it is really a kid's uh, a kid's kit, but I really really enjoyed it. I thought it was really very good. And then it's just a case of connecting the port into the socket for each of the motors. Again, it's just a pull. Uh, it's just a push affair. So the the plugs will be in the in, in the correct shape. Just click them in, and that's it. That is the quadcopter built, my friend. Total time to build it: an hour and a half. And then we went into testing. But you're going to see that testing tomorrow. Now we have got the transmitter, and this was relatively easier to put together, and the, the, the whole look of the transmitter I find absolutely intoxicating. So there's the printed circuit board that just fits on top, and then the top part of the transmitter there just connects in. And literally, you've got the supports around the outside, which you clip into place, with, which then holds the top to the bottom, which are these little bits here the hand is pushing out now. And then that's it. Oh, one of them snapped. 
Uh, I think, yeah, we ended up fixing that. Perfect. Brilliant stuff. There we are, fixed. And then from there, it was just a simple case of just attaching it all. Right then, my friends, I'm going to leave you there to watch the rest of the video. I hope you've enjoyed. Thank you ever so much for watching and listening. The full test of this is coming tomorrow. I've been JD. You've been fantastic as always. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe and ring that bell too. Hello and welcome to all the new subscribers. I hope you're enjoying the channel. So until next time, my friends, happy building. <laughs>